السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ تعالی وبرکاتہ اشد 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 محمد رسول اشد محمد رسول اللہ رب العالمین والصلاة والسلام على اشرف المرسلین سیدنا و نبینا و مولانا محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم الحمدللہ اللذی هدانا لہذا و ما کننا لنہتدی لولا ان هدانا اللہ نحمده و نستعینه و نستهدیه و نؤمن به و نتوکل علیه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مذل له ومن يدلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وقته لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أما بعد يا عباد الله اتقوا الله اتقوا الله اتقوا الله رحمكم الله إنه هو الغفور الرحيم فقد قال الله تعالى في القرآن الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس إنا خلقناكم من ذكر وأنثى وجعلناكم شعوبا وقبائل لتعارفوا إن أكرمكم عند الله أكفاكم صدق الله العظيم قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الحديث إنما الأعمال بالنية My respected brothers and sisters, leaders of this community, leaders of this mosque and this congregation, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. 
It is an enormous pleasure to be with you today. And we have traveled from Cape Town to be with you via San Francisco. It is unfortunate that we may have missed the last part of the soccer, but inshallah our presence here will maybe benefit the team that we may want to win. But out of this World Cup, whatever happens on the field, there will be one piece of Islam that will abide in the minds of global citizens, wherever they stand, what, whether they like Muslims or not, whether they know about Islam or not. They have all been exposed to the ayah of Surah Hujurat that I have recited in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhan nas, O people, not O Muslims, O people. Inna khalaqnaakum min dhakari wa untha. We have created you from a single source of male and female. Wa ja'alnaakum shu'uba wa qaba'ila. We have diversified you. We have made you into different tribes and nations and made you people with differences. Lita'arafu. That you may come to know one another. Not that you despise one another, not that you hate one another, not that you fear one another, but that you come to know one another. Lita'arafu. Differences are there to know one another. If we are simply the same, there is nothing to know. If we all believe in the same way, there is nothing to explore. If we all dress the same way, there is nothing to admire. There is nothing to cause bewilderment if we don't know each other. And the way to know each other, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, is through our differences. Inna akramakum indallahi atqaakum. The only distinction, the degree of nobility, the karam in you, does not depend on all of those differences. It is at qakum. It is how pious you are, how righteous you are, how good you are. That is the distinction in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore, this idea of difference amongst people is underpinned in Surah to Rum. In the 22nd verse, where Allah again describes how Allah has created humankind with different languages and different colors. And that these differences, Allah says, is not despite the tawheed, the unity of Allah, but is one of the signs of the existence and the magnificence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this idea about your nobility, your distinction, your superiority, not being dependent on any difference. In, for example, Surah Ankabut, in the second verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks, Hasiba nas, do people think a yutraku that it is sufficient that they will be left alone, that it is enough for you? Ayyakulu amanna, that you say, I believe. Wahum la yufsadun without being tested. Meaning that saying Aman to Billah, that I believe in Allah is not enough without you having to pass a test. And the test of our times, my respected brothers and sisters, in the contemporary world is how humanity responds to difference. 30 years ago, we would not have known the insides of a white person. 30 years ago, we may not know the insides of a black hut in Africa. 30 years ago, we may not have known anything about anyone who is different to us because we grew up in villages where people were the same with us. But the world has evolved in such a way that we have been scattered now. We who have come from the Arab worlds mingle in the American world. We who have come from the African worlds find ourselves now in the capitals of our earlier colonizers. We who have come from the Asian worlds now occupy whole villages. 
a Chinese market in the heart of every city in the world. That is our difference has crept un, up on us and the test for us as Muslims and as humanity is whether we can manage difference, whether we can coexist with different people, whether the different, and the test for us is whether the differences become divisions and whether coexistence inevitably leads to conflict. I come from a country, South Africa, where I've participated, alhamdulillah, in the anti-apartheid struggle with leaders like Nelson Mandela, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, Joe Slovo, and so many others of completely different cultural, religious, and political backgrounds. I come from a community in South Africa, the Malay community who's Muslim. And together with the blacks in South Africa, we were despised and oppressed and discriminated against. Together with other religious communities who were not Christian of the Africana variety, we also faced discrimination and particularly Islamophobia, where Islam as a religion for almost 200 years was banned and Muslims as a community were either jailed or they were enslaved. My ancestors came to South Africa as slaves of the Dutch and remained such for almost two centuries. So in addition to the racism that comes with our darker skin, in addition to the enslavement that comes from the chains that they wore, and in addition to that, there was also the hatred of Islam and Muslims, and therefore the highest degree of Islamophobia imaginable. But together, all the victims of the colonial and apartheid regimes fought heroic anti-apartheid struggles. And together, at the moment that Nelson Mandela became the first democratically elected president, we fashioned a bill of rights and a constitution that said that never again will we do to anyone who is different what was done to us with all our differences. And so for Muslims, coexistence is not an option or a luxury. Coexistence is a divine injunction, as I have discussed in the various ayat. More than that, it is the human condition. We find ourselves in Redmond, in Seattle, in the United States, in Europe, in Britain, all over the world, coexisting with differences as part of the human conditions of seeking, for example, our risk, our sustenance, and our freedom. But more importantly, coexistence is a modern necessity. We must embrace it, and we must plan for it. Only when we don't plan for it, does it hijack us or does it ambush us? Only when we are not aware of the need to coexist do we make the mistakes in the management of that coexistence because coexistence is a double-edged sword. It has a good side and it has a challenging side. And that's why it has both joys and it has problems and challenges. And the option is not to opt out, not to hide in some corner, not to recreate the old homeland where you are. Because then you don't follow through with the injunction You don't get to know those who are different from you and you don't expose them to get to know you as a Muslim and Islam as your religion. The joys that we have found on coming here was either in our escape from poverty, where we used to live, where we, our parents grew up, or our grandparents grew up, or oppression, because some Muslim leaders did to us also terrible things. And we came here in search of opportunity and we came here in search of dignity. 
But most importantly, Allah makes no accidents. Allah has caused circumstances to locate us here, for example, in Redmond. To pick up the lost property of the believers. Centuries ago, al khawarizmi in Andalusia perfected the science of algorithms. And then for some reason or other, the Ummah feared the knowledge that we uncovered in the canons of medicine, in the astronomy that we sought, in the algorithms that we derived, in the al al that became the algebra. We turned our back on what we call secular education, discovered by our ancestors as Muslims. We turned our back on that and we left it as our lost property. That lost property came to a place like Redmond and drove the fourth industrial revolution. And our best brains followed that algorithms that now became the computer technologies, the iPhone technologies, the technological revolution followed it. And they came wittingly or unwittingly in pursuit of the hadith that says that wisdom is the lost property of the believers. Wherever they see it, they pick it up. That's what these generations are here for. To pick up the lost property that we left in Baghdad, that we left in Andalusia, that we left behind in the Mughal Empire, that we left behind wherever we had the great civilizations such as with Suleiman the Magnificent and many other leaders. So you are not here by accident. You are here on the injunction to pick up the lost property of the believers. But with that comes the double-edged sword of joy and challenge. Because Allah promises us, you will be tested. It's not enough to sit here and to say, I'm unto be lied, that I believe in Allah, you will be tested. In the USA, a country that simultaneously gives you this opportunity, also tests you. Because while it needs you, like Europe needs North Africans, Europe needs other Africans, they cannot simply accept us for who we are. They'd love us to come here with our brains and to leave our hearts filled with piety at the border. They'd love us to come here and assimilate and become the same with them and leave behind every marker of difference in our dress and our cuisine and all of those kind of things. So while it needs us, it tests us and challenges us. It gives us discrimination in the form of Islamophobia. But we are not the only ones discriminated against because before there was Islamophobia, there was the genocide of the First Nations. There was the slavery of the Africans who were brought here. We are just the last line of the conveyor belt of discrimination. We come here and we find lifestyles that are strange to us and challenging to us. And we have to coexist with it while we enjoy the enjoyments of a living, a degree of freedom and an income and picking up the lost property. And we encounter a culture that often we don't understand, but that may be good to participate in if it is not out and out wrong, such as, for example, we too may often need to give thanks, because it is not a calendar date for us. It is the condition of being Muslim that you are thankful to humanity as a precondition to being thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So encountering difference is not new to the Ummah except that wherever the Ummah spread out of the Hijaz, the Saudi Arabian area, and encountered difference, multicultures created something new. When they encountered people in Baghdad, when they encountered people in Spain, when they encountered people in India, they took up whatever was good in that society, managed the challenging parts, and created civilizations out of it. But the test 
template was laid in the 13 years of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa when he and the early Muslims were in Mecca. That was of the most challenging, difficult years that the Ummah, that those early Muslims had faced. They faced difficulties and humiliations, persecutions and oppressions while they were there. It was so bad that Sumayya, may Allah be pleased with her, was the first martyr. Bilal, may Allah be pleased with him, was tortured. Abu Bakr, who was a contemporary millionaire, became poverty-stricken because they boycotted him. The Prophet وسلم, was insulted. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intervenes where the differences are harsh and the challenges are heavy. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals Surah Kafirun, and without Going through the whole thing, Allah says, Ya Iwal Kafirun, O oh, you who disbelieve, I do not believe what you believe, you do not believe what I believe, I will never believe what you believe, you will never believe what I believe. Lakum dinukum waliyadin. It sounds as if the first few verses sounds like a declaration of war because of the difficulties that is going on. And yet it ends with a call to toleration. Tolerance is that which you manage when you dislike it. When you are punished by it, you tolerate it. And lakum dinukum waliyadin to you, your religion, to me, mine, is the ultimate call to toleration. I, we can't manage each other, but we live in the same space. You have the dominant power. I live where I don't make the rules and therefore to you your religion and to me mine. That is the declaration of tolerance. But, of course, even when the Prophet ﷺ seeks relief by going to Ta'if and seeing whether there are possibilities for the Muslims to move to Ta'if, he gets pelted with stones. He gets humiliated and he sits in an orchard. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends the angel to the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and says, We have the mountains on the right and we have the mountains on the left. On your command, Allah says that we can crush these people who have humiliated you like this. An ordinary person like any one of us sitting here would have said, Please do it. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, no, maybe from their progeny will come good. It's a call not just to tolerance, but it's a vision of the future that makes the current difficulties more bearable because you have a vision of where you want to be. And so, when the Prophet ﷺ eventually moves to Medina, And there is an alliance with Us and Khazraj. The first thing the Prophet ﷺ does is they draw up the charter of Medina, the constitution of Medina that guarantees that difference will not cause division. That each different person has rights and each different person has obligations. And they write it in and they include even the polytheists, the mushriks, and even the, those suspected of hypocrisy, the munafiq. They include them in there. Not because they've converted them to Islam, but because they had a charter of managing difference so that the challenges don't become difficult and explosive in the future. And then, in Medina now, Allah changes the narrative in Surah Mantahana. And Allah says, I want to be rajim. La Allah does not forbid you. And in Ladina, regarding those non Muslims, Lam yuqati lukum fiddeen who do not drive, who do not fight you for your faith. Wa lam yukhrijukum min diyarihim. 
No drive you from your homes. And tabarruhum from being righteous with them. Wa tuqsitu ilayh and being just and fair with them. Allah does not say, if they believe like you, be just and fair and righteous. Allah does not say, when they don't do wrong things that you dis disapprove of, then only then be righteous and be just with them. Allah says only two criteria for managing difference. Do they fight you for your deen? Do they persecute you when you pray? Do they stop you from doing your ibadat? And do they drive you from your homes? Because those were the two things that obtained in Makkah. And those were the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made as the most important criteria for, 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 for what they do. And all those other things that bother us, that we are uncomfortable with, and so forth. It's very interesting that as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was revealing Surah Kafirun, the Surah of Toleration, we also have in Makkah revealed Surah Isra, the night journey that speaks about the Mi'raj. Allah then legislates what is the responsibility of Muslims in a situation of discomfort, of hostility, and where there are strange and foreign things happening that you don't understand. And Surah Isra not only legislates the five daily prayers as the ultimate way in which you defend yourself and your identity, but it is in that that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, don't do shirk. Don't associate partners with Allah. The next one in Surah Isra is, don't kill your children. Allah says this to the Muslims. Don't kill your children for fear of want. Thirdly, Allah says to the Muslims, La taqrabu zina. Don't approach anything that is lewd or sinful. Don't you do it. It is an instruction to Muslims on how to conduct themselves in a strange and uncomfortable situation. The onus does not go to the rulers of Makkah. It's not going to tell the rulers of Makkah, don't do this, that, and the other. It is to Muslims that you fortify yourselves against it. You fortify your children against it. You fortify your families against it. You fortify your community against it. That is the responsibility that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then puts to Muslims. And so, my respected brothers and sisters, I want to say that in this world, in which the major contemporary test is whether we have the ability to manage coexistence. Allah has not sent us up a creek without a paddle. Allah has guided us. Allah has given us the tools of coexistence, and I will speak a bit more about this when we are inside for those who have interest to come in launching, living where we don't make the rules in which we speak about some of these tools of coexistence because they are there in the Quran and in the Sunnah. But the most important thing, and I end on this, is that our major task as Muslims in this world where we are minority, the first thing we must understand is that before Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa before Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was Rasulullah, the messenger of Allah, he was Al-Ameen the trustworthy. Ours is the obligation to build trust in our community in much the same way that MAPS is trusted to distribute food to the poor, is trusted to give COVID support, is trusted to manage government money correctly for the correct purposes and account for it because we are building up trust as the precondition for making the message of Islam a receptive one. وآخر الدعوان أن الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين قال الله تعالى إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما 
Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad wa ashabihi wa barik wa sallim wa radallahumma anil arba'ati khulafai rashidin Abi Bakra Siddiq wa Umar ibn al-Khattab wa Uthman bin Affan wa Ali ibn Abi Talib radiyallahu wa karamallahu ta'ala alayhim ajma'in Allahumma a'izza al-Islam wa al-Muslimin wa adhilla al-Shirka wa al-Mushrikin اللهم انصر من نصر الدين محمد مصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا أذاب النار O oh Allah we ask you on this يوم الجمعة to make us of those who are steadfast in our faith and observant of our obligations to you ya Allah O oh Allah we ask you to make us examples of people who are trustworthy so that eventually inshallah our message can reach every heart in the areas that we are in, inshallah. Oh Allah, we ask you to remove the anger and to remove the bitterness that may come from encountering all of this difference so that we can learn the art of managing difference, diversity and coexistence, inshallah. Oh Allah, put temperateness in our hearts so that we can always have a smile on our face and be your messenger in the world that we live in, even in the face of enormous provocation. وآخر الدعوان الحمد لله رب العالمين إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى أن الفخشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لألكم تذكرون وأقم الصلاة Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah, Ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah. Hayya ala as-salah, hayya ala al-falah. Qad qamat as-salah, qad qamat as-salah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illa Allah. Still, I had to stop you. Straighten your rows for the gaps. Allah, I do الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا سبح اسم ربك الأعلى الذي خلق فسوى والذي قدر فهدى والذي أخرج المرعى فجعله غثاء أحوى سنقرئك فلا تنسى إلا ما شاء الله إنه يعلم الجهر وما يخفى ونيسرك لليسرى فذكر إن نفعت الذكرى سيذكر من يخشى ويتجنبها الأشقى الذي يصل النار الكبرى ثم لا يموت فيها ولا يحيا قد أفلح من تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى 
إن هذا لفي الصحف الأولى صحف إبراهيم وموسى الله سمع الله من حمده الله Allah 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 إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينُ اهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمَ صِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الضَّالِّينَ وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنْسَانِ سان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر الله سمع الله من حمد Allah 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 السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم a few important announcements I'm happy to welcome uh, Ambassador Ibrahim Rasul to our community uh, he comes to us all the way from Cape Town. If you look at the world map, the two furthest places are Seattle and Cape Town. And so we thank him for taking the long journey to be with us this weekend. Uh, he was South Africa's ambassador to the United States during Obama presidency. He was the governor of Cape Town, one of the largest provinces there. So we are, uh, he, he also recently wrote a book called Living Where We Didn't, Don't Make Rules. He will have book signing as well as a lecture right after this prayer at 1 o'clock in the NPR room. Lunch will be served. You can have opportunity to get his book and autograph by him as well as listen to the lecture. Please join right after the prayer, inshallah. Uh, we are also finished our elections uh, in the last uh, week. And mashallah, we have uh, four, uh, two new existing members as well as two mem new members, Mahmoud Khadir, who is no stranger, is in the, bo uh, uh, to the board, as well as his sister Hind, has uh, also joined is the board uh, as well. We do have a new president, and I want to invite uh, Brother Nasser Vakil uh, to come here. He was a vice president. Uh, he was in the board in the past for a period of time. He left United States, U.S. for job, and we came back. He joined the, the board. And he was VP, and now he's another president. I'm so pleased to have someone 
of his caliber, his uh, wisdom, assumed the presidency. Uh, I know that he hesitated a lot. The election committee will tell you that he was the last person to accept the nomination. He took on this knowing that this is a heart, you know, this is an amana, the responsibility that he owes to the community. And we really are thankful to him. I only ask that you, you know, you give the same support that you gave to the previous ones so that he can continue to be successful. It is a job where you will not agree with everything that you have to make, uh, but that's part of the leadership is that you have to make those decisions. And I really hope that, inshallah, we wish him. And we are there to support him as well. And I'll ask him to say a few words, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. So, Jazakum Allah khairan to all of you for the support and for, for the trust. It's really a big amana. So, going forward, I ask you to all to remember me and also all of the rest of the boards in your duas. You will need lots of them. You will need your nasiha. So, at any time, anything you see, any issue, please do not hesitate to pick up the phone, reach out to us, reach out to the board. Our board meetings are open. So, inshallah, that and the third one is your support. It's not a, our individual journey, but we are all collectively, inshallah, marching forward. So, please, inshallah, we all, and we expect that you all will, inshallah, pitch in. Jazakum Allah khair. Assalamu alaikum. Takbir. 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 So, I have a few requests for duas. Father of Haris Sayyid and Sa'ad Sayyid uh, got COVID on uh, his return from Umrah. He's in ICU. There's a request to make dua. There's also a request for uh, uh, Zaidan Sayyid, who was born on November 1st, suffered brain hemorrhage, and uh, is in neonatal intensive care. Their parents are asking for dua for their little, little newborn one. Jazakallah Hayran, support the masjid and all the announcements are in the... In the Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We also had one more dua request for a member of uh, our community whose father is critically ill in Burma. His name is Yusuf. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him shifa, complete shifa, and all those that are sick. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Jazakumullah khair.